Okay, so the greatest among us will be servants. So it's kind of God turns the world upside down. And we're the first shall be last and the last shall be first. So let us all rise. Uh, we haven't played, we haven't sung this, this uh, hymn in a while. Uh, how great thou art. That's what I just sing, how great thou art. My God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the display then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul
Give thanks to God, for God is good. God's love endures forever. God has come to God's people with blessings and hope. Praise God for the many ways God touches our lives. Your steadfast love endures forever, God. How can we keep you from sinning and grace when we suffer from hunger and thirst? You deliver us from distress. When our souls faint within us, you revive us with pools of clear water. Help our, our hearts be humble, that we may seek the welfare of others before our own honor and glory. And in deepest humility, we ask that our steps never falter as we seek the welfare of all. Amen. It was Jesus, Jesus that taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So let us uh, prepare our hearts and our minds and let us focus as we pray. Lord of hope and healing, you are so generous and gracious to us and we thank you. We thank you for the many ways that you touch our lives and bless us and watch over us and answer all of our prayers. Lord, we say we want you to walk with us. Sometimes we are not so comfortable with the path that you set before us. We would like a smooth, newly leveled, paved path with clear markings, bright, bold signs, and telling us what to do, warning us about what lies ahead. But our journeys as disciples are like rough mountain paths sometimes. There are rocks and ruts and dirt and holes. There are many wolves and scammers that are at every turn, it seems. Hold our hands, guide our hearts through these many struggles. Well, Lord, today we pray again for your church. We pray that we will become the light on the hill for many generations, especially the young, who are curious about your word and your wisdom. Help them to walk through the doors of your church so that they may discover the answers to their questions of how to live life, as well as to discover our love and our empathy. Oh Lord, today we have faithfully brought before you the names of loved ones in need of healing, in need of comfort. Remind us that we too we are in need of the same healing love. We also like to lift up those who are on a prayer list this day, who are new to our prayer list. Pam Hollinger for successful treatment of lung cancer. Jenna Rue Jung for successful treatment of a brain tumor. And for Crystal Genomino, for emotional support in God's, your guidance. We pray that your healing hand will touch each of them by bringing them love, your love, your comfort, your assurance. And at this time, we turn our hearts to you, O Lord. May your spirit be with all those who are viewing this service here in our sanctuary and those who are out in the world that are viewing from our YouTube channel. Bring us to you. 
Comfort our hearts. Renew our minds. Guide our paths in holy ways as we lift up our concerns to you now in silence. Oh Lord, strengthen us, walk with us, lift us high and give us the confidence to follow your will and your path as we lift these things up in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, our second hymn today is called The Spirit of the Living God and we always ask for the Lord's Holy Spirit to be with us again, renewing us. You know, as we come to worship the Lord, we, we come to get refreshed. And we ask that when we're singing that the Lord's Spirit will breathe through us and renew us, renew our hearts, renew our purpose, as well as fill us with unconditional love for others that are around us and help us to be good servants. So let us all rise, let us all sing together, Spirit of the Living God.
When you came into the sanctuary this morning, you had an opportunity to place an offering in our offering plate. If you are on, online watching and tuning in, uh, there's an opportunity to click below and to a secured link and you can make an offering to one of our various missions that we have here at the church. The one who turns arid lands into springs of water and feeds the hungry from fruitful lands and fields calls us to work for the healing of our world. So let us give what we can of our gifts, our time, and our talent to help with the mission and maintenance needs of Christ Church. As Christ's disciples, let us all rise and let's sing together with joy in our heart the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. We praise you for our many blessings, for the water that refreshes us, for the fields that yield bountiful harvests, for the wine that gladdens our hearts. May the gifts we bring this day go forth to bless your world with abundance. Through Christ our Lord, Amen. Amen. Scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 23, verses 1 through 12. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, The teachers of the law and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. So you must be careful to do everything they tell you. But do not do what they do, for they do not practice what they preach. They tie up heavy, cumbersome loads and put them on other people's shoulders, but they themselves are not willing to lift a finger to move them. Everything they do is done for people to see. They make their phylacteries, that's a toughie, wide and the tassels on their garments long. They love the place of honor at banquets and the most important seats in the synagogues. They love to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to be called rabbi by others. But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher, and you are all brothers. And do not call anyone on earth father, for you have one father, and he is in heaven. Nor are you to be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Messiah. The greatest among you will be your servant, for those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Our scripture today begins with an observation, an observation made by Jesus after he answered the question about the greatest commandment. Jesus answered with the first, what was that? Love, so love God. To love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. And the second is to love, to love your neighbors 
as you love yourself. The crowds and Jesus' disciples were surrounding him. And he begins to give us this insight, this insight about the teachers of the law and the Pharisees who sit on the Moses seat. You know, they were the public teachers, the interpreters of the law of Moses and of the common law of their nation. They were also the judges for their nation. And yet Jesus tells us, he tells us to be aware of who sits on the Moses seat because they like to observe the people. They like to, to read and preach the law that was given by Moses. Therefore, you must be careful, you must be careful to do everything they tell you within the scripture. But do not do as they do. Do not do as they do. For they do not practice what they teach or what they preach. As believers, we are to avoid the errors of their ways. There are many teachers of the Word of God today, in our world today, who don't practice what they teach. That's within the scripture. That don't practice what they teach within the scripture. Just like those teachers of the Pharisees during the time of Jesus' ministry. Jesus is encouraging us to stay true to God's word. To stay true to the Bible. To be careful not to become like someone who pretends to follow the word of God, pretense. As Jesus mentions in verse 4, the Jewish leaders like to place heavy burdens on the backs of the people. And yet, they themselves will, are not willing, they're not willing to lift the finger, to lift the finger to help the people in any way. They place these tremendous burdens on them, and they're not helping them. Do as I teach you, not as I do, seems to be their message. Jesus continues to point out that they make their philanthropies. Why? Um, these, I'm going to kind of explain this to you. Philanthropies are like little leather boxes, okay? And these little leather boxes, they go on their foreheads or they actually go on their arms, okay? And they're used, they use leather straps. And in the box, there's actually scripture readings that they have in them. So they're walking around with these things on their arms, on their forehead. And they also have these tassels that are on their garments. They wore them as a reminder. They, they were worn as a reminder to follow God in the Jewish law. That's why they wear them. They love to take their places of honor at the banquets, the best seats in the synagogue. They like to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces as they walk around. And they especially like to be called rabbi. In a way, in a way, Jesus was comparing them to the Roman and Greek actors at the time. So bear with me first, okay? If you were to go to an ancient Greek theater at that time, the actors wore these very large masks. They put large masks to cover their face. And they spoke through these mechanical devices which would enhance their voice in order to interpret the character that they were playing. So they had these masks and they had these little things that help their, their voices. So, and to help them interpret the, the, the person that they were playing in that theater story. They dressed their part for the character they pretended to be. 
You know, the word, the, the Greek word for actor is this, hypocrite. The Greek word for actor is hypocrite, or a, a stage actor or a player in that theater. The Greek word hypocrite is a compound noun. It's a compound noun which literally translates into this, these, these words. An interpreter from underneath. An interpreter from underneath. Think about that for a moment. An interpreter from underneath. Jesus was pointing out that the Jewish leaders were pretending to be holy people of God. Pretending. But underneath their mask, they wore, they were pretending their actions were far from God's heart. It was far from God's heart. Jesus is giving us something to watch out for as disciples. Jesus instructs his disciples in verse 8, You are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher, and you are all brothers. And do not call anyone on earth father, for you have one father, and he is in heaven. Think about that for a moment. Think about that for a moment. And do not call anyone on earth father, for you have one father and he is in heaven. Nor are you to be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Messiah. My friends, Jesus is, is our best example. He's our best example of how to live our life correctly and faithfully as Christians. It's important for us to learn about the Word of God. It's very important. Our knowledge of God's Word helps us. It helps us to be better observants within the world. It helps us to identify the woes that are around us, whose actions are contrary to God's will. These individuals, they like to dress up in sheep's clothing. Sheep's clothing. Who can be found in, within God's earthly kingdom. They're in the kingdom. Their aim is to deceive the infants. The infants are new believers within the kingdom. Those who have been fed very little knowledge would be very difficult for them to be a good observant. As disciples, we need to be cautious because we live in a, within a world that is full of evil. It's full of evil. It's full of deceit. We have scammers on every corner, it seems like. We get scam calls every single day. People trying to deceive us. Plenty of people who like to wear large masks to cover up their actions. They use the internet as their masks. Those who oppose God's holy word. Those whose hearts, whose minds and souls, whose minds and souls are far away from God's word. Keep this in mind. Keep this in mind. It was the Jewish teachers and the Pharisees, even Saul, Saul, before he was transformed, became Paul, persecuted the early Jewish followers of Christ. Persecuted. They were the ones that wanted to destroy the early Christian church. Where's the love? Jesus again reminds us in verse 11, that the greatest among you will be your servant. Will be your servant. This is God's view of how things shall be. Think about this whole week and what you've done. Okay? The greatest among you will be your servant. They, what it means, this is what it means to humble yourself. To humble yourself. The greatest among us will serve others. 
they are considered the servants of God. They are observant, they are obedient, and they work under the will of God. They have complete trust and faith in Christ, in Christ's church. Jesus is informing us that the greatest is not a tyrant king. It's not a bully. It's not somebody that tries to control your lives. That is not the greatest, but a servant. We are all considered ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are all ministers of Jesus Christ. We are all to share God's word with others. And we are all to serve in the kingdom. Verse 12 says, all who exalt themselves will be humbled. Whoever exalts themselves shall be humbled. Kind of makes you think about Nebuchadnezzar. He was humbled. Makes you think about Herod. He was humbled. It makes you think about Saul. Was he not humbled? How many people do we know that we know who have exalted themselves in this world? They, they exalted themselves to the top of the trinity of I. Me, myself, and I. It all revolves around me, myself, and I. I'm at the top of the mountain. They push everybody down. Their day is coming, my friends. They shall be humbled too. The day of judgment. Day of confusion and of shame will be brought upon them by the humbling spirit of God because God is about hum being humble. Jesus tells us all who humble themselves will be exalted. How many people would say they are Christians today? How many people do you know that are not here that say they're Christians? Who actually practice what they are taught? How many open up their Bibles weekly? How many pray every day? How many Christians attend a worship service once a week? How many Christians actually consider themselves to be servants and actually serve within God's kingdom? My friends, Jesus is charging all Christians here, all Christians to be cautious and be aware to humble themselves. When we serve others, we learn about humility. When you're serving others, you learn about humility. As we put others before ourselves, we begin to practice what we are taught. What we are taught. Jesus, by far, is our best example of how to live life with humility. When we serve others, we, we humble ourselves when we do that. Our act of humility has great value. It has great value placed on it by God. When we do that, there is great value placed on it by God. For Jesus tells us that we will be exalted for it. Think about that. It's not wasted effort to learn how to be humble. It's value. And you will be exalted by doing that. Jesus is providing us with a great understanding about our actions and about our choices. Those choices and actions that we do every day. That the paths we choose have consequences. Also, the paths we choose have value. Either our actions will be humbled or our actions will be exalted. Again, Jesus is encouraging us to live our lives as faithful servants. Not to put on large masks. Put on large masks to pretend we are playing a part within God's earthly kingdom. Not to put this mask on. But rather to take that mask off and throw it somewhere. Be yourself. Be your true you, who you are. Humble yourself by digging into the Word of God to become more knowledgeable 
so you'll be able to discover for yourself what God wants you to do. Your purpose within the kingdom by using your special gifts that the Lord has placed upon you. Jesus reminds us that we have one teacher, and that teacher is Christ himself. All we have to do is look at Jesus' life, look at his examples, and that provides us with the standards for living with purpose, a purpose-filled life that brings glory to God every day. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Amen. Amen. Well, we've been touched by the Lord's Holy Spirit this day. We've had communion with our Lord. We have given God thanks and praise for the many blessings that the Lord has provided to us in the answered prayers. And we've lifted up many prayers for those we care about and that we love. And today we have learned many things, but whoever exalts themselves shall be humbled. And all who humble themselves will be exalted. That the paths we choose have consequences or value. Either actions will be humble or they will be exalted. So let us celebrate. Let us celebrate God's grace as we embrace the Lord's unconditional love and the Holy Spirit's encouragement in our lives as we rise and we sing something that is so needed. And I think that we're closing in. We're going to try to sing about peace because we have so much unrest in our world today. And today it's the world peace prayer is our hymn. Let us rise and let us sing. Peace 